chairman, Chuck Dawson of Corbett University Mayor Department, also my former student, also the author of the best-selling undergrad research book, Ramsey Theory on the Integers, now on its second edition, very, very strongly recommended. We will talk about part one, the probabilistic threshold for arithmetic progressions. Unfortunately, uh, Aaron is not perfect. He decided to go back right away to drive because he has to teach tomorrow. So once again, there's no dinner. But hopefully next week, the speaker will not be so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. for inviting me. Um, so I was here quite a while ago. Um, and then I had to cancel on him. I can't remember why. Uh, and then he said if I didn't come this time, then I would never come back. <laughs> Since I want to come back, I made sure to get here. Uh, so a little bit of background. I went to University of Michigan for undergraduate. I got my degree in actuarial science, and after that realized I don't want to do actuarial science. Uh, so I took my GREs late, um, applied to grad school very late. Um, uh, Temple decided to take me. Uh, and it wasn't, I always liked math, but it wasn't until I took uh, Doron's combinatorics class that I really found what I loved. Um, and my uh, dissertation had to do with Ramsey theory, so I'm not sure why he gave me that problem. It was much different than other types of problems, um, but I've stuck with it. And so I'm going to give kind of two lectures for the price of one. Um, one is, the first one is um, kind of purely combinatorics. The second one uh, you can say is experimental math and some kind of flavor. So uh, and that's what I'm currently working on. So for the first one, I'm not going to assume anybody knows anything about Ramsey theory, so uh, I'll give you the definitions to get you up to speed. So what we do is um, we're, I'm going to focus on integers. So each integer gets one of a finite number of colors. So that's just a mapping like this. Um, and an arithmetic progression is just a sequence with a constant gap, additive gap between them. Um, and so what we're after is this w function. And it's the minimum integer that if you take our colors, you can guarantee there's a monochromatic arithmetic progression. So if you have two colors, then you color one through nine, you can do a little exercise and show there's a three-term arithmetic progression. You can't avoid it. And so Ramsey theory is about uh, the structures that you partition by colors, and one of the colors has to have the partitioning in it. So you can't break the structure. Um, the existence was proved by Van der Verden, I think 1927, somewhere around there. Um, and the lower bound is this, essentially R to the K. The upper bound is a work by Gowers cited in his Fields Metal work, so it comes out of analysis. Um, but before this, it was a tower of twos, so it grew like k twos, and so he got it to finite, and this is a big deal. Um, but it's still far from the truth. Yeah, it's still far from the truth. So if you take r equals two and plug in five, you'll see. <laughs> We're not that close together. Okay, so this approach, these these numbers are very difficult to calculate. Uh, it's known for like three, four, five, and six. And that's it. Uh, six is 1178. It was done um, by a computer whiz kid who got his PhD in computer science and now is working at a company somewhere. Um, really, and it still took a year, parallel computing all this. So these are not easy. And how do you know you didn't mess up? I, I don't. <laughs> I assume. Um, is it possible to run it again independently? I have not seen his code out there. Yeah. I don't know that it's out there. But I mean, I mean, guess. the proof that it's bigger than 1177 is probably pretty straightforward. Yeah. 
Yeah, you can probably find the lower bound, but oh, yeah. the exhaustive is going to take a while. Um, so I just, I, I assume he's correct. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to, I'm approaching this a little differently because the absolute number, we need 100% of the colorings to always have it. And as we see, that's hard. So I want to find, instead of a W, some kind of th threshold function that if you have, um, I'm going to say less than, I'll, I'll make it specific. If you have less than that many, then almost no, none of the colorings have a monochromatic. And if you have more, almost all of them do. And so I'm talking in a probabilistic sense. And so the threshold function I'm looking at these properties. Most people are probably familiar with the little o of n, and so that the uh, ratio of g of n over t of n goes to zero. A little omega is the up, uh, is the reciprocal. And so I'm looking for this kind of function where it separates into almost none, which would be probability zero, and almost all. Okay, so. The distribution is every R coloring is equally likely. Uh, these are just definitions. K term arithmetic progression, I'm just going to refer to as KAP. Here's the notation I'm going to use so we don't have to write that whole thing down. So the starting point, the gap, and then this uh, subscript is the length. Uh, like I said, I'll refer to D as the gap. And in uh, when we we're specific to the integers, so the interval 1 to n is just the integers. Okay, so in order to approach this, um, I'm looking at, these are very related to the threshold, but the minimum function, uh, I just, uh, I want to find a function so that every other function, if I'm looking at that, is in some sense bigger and then the maximum every other function uh, is smaller. So let me define how these are used. So n plus is a function where I want the probability to tend to 1. And then n minus is probability 0. So uh, if I'm ordering from 1 to n, or 1 to infinity, I've got 1, I've got n minus, then I've got n plus, and then I've got W, like this. So just to give you an idea. Okay. Here we go. So here are what was currently done. So Tom Brown uh, gave this bound. So 2 to the K, log K. And then uh, VJ, Sujit VJ, uh, um, significantly improved this. So 2 to the K over 2, and then k to the 3 halves. And so, <coughs> excuse me, you see this gk, any function tending to infinity. So that's where this kind of threshold function comes in with the little omega and little o. That's translated as this term. And so this can be arbitrarily slow to infinity. So you can have 500 logs of k. Okay. As long as it goes there, everything works. Okay, so I kept the n plus and n minus over there. So a, a standard argument using linearity of an expectation, so you have um, xi is the indicator of uh, random variable, so it's either 0 or 1 depending on if the ith um, arithmetic regression is monochromatic. And so you're looking at the sum of all these indicator variables, the expectation of the sum is the sum of the expectations, and it really pretty standard that this falls out, this lower bound. And so this k to the 1 half r to the k over 2 comes from the, uh, the um, linearity of expectations. You'll see I've introduced this f going to 0, so that's again this um, little o, little omega. And so when you stare at this, it's very tantalizing, right? Because there's a lot of things that are the same, and if you stare really hard, you'll see that that 3 is the only thing that's really different. So, 
The question is, can I change that three to a one? Right? So if the if I can make that three a one, then you see you've got root k r to the k over two, and then you've got the f and the g's, but that's part of the threshold function definition, and so you can say that's the threshold function. Okay, can we do it? What's the answer? Yes. Okay, so how? Now, I'm not gonna give proofs because uh, I don't like listening to proofs, people mm -hmm. going through them step by step. I'll give you an idea of what's going on, um, and then I'll point you to the paper if you want the details. I'll put some details so you get an idea, but I'm not going to go through it. Okay, so here's the idea. So I'm going to let n be this. What I'm looking for is I can't, I know that if I use all of the arithmetic progressions, that it's not going to work. It's already been tried. So that's, that's where uh, Tom Brown is coming from. So I need a smaller family. And I need some structure so that I can actually play with it and use the properties in that structure. But I can't make it too small because then I'll get nothing. So I need it to have a proportion, a positive proportion of the number of APs with some structure. So that sounds very vague. And it is. Uh, hard, sorry. Yeah. Um, so uh, are, are you saying that the issue is if you look at all the arithmetic progressions, it has too high variance or something? If you look at all the arithmetic progressions, they're in some sense, there's too much overlap uh -huh. is, is the idea. That you're going to have too many arithmetic progressions with common terms. And as you go, let me just put there. Next slide. Come on. This term becomes a problem when there's too many because you're trying to make this, uh, let's see, which way do I want it? I want to make it small. And if there's a lot of overlap, then the probability is, is kind of too big when you combine them. Um, so I, I want arithmetic progressions that don't have much overlap in some sense. So how do you do that is, is a question, but uh, that's where the problem is. So, Yes, it is related to variance, because we're looking at the interaction. So I want to control that term. So here's how we want to use it. So I'm not going to color 1 through n. I'm going to color subintervals of the same length. So I'm going to have a bunch of these subintervals. And I want the probability that I have no monochromatic KAP to look like this. Okay. And you'll see that when I have that, and this is how many subintervals I have, I'm going to do specifics, then the probability that none of them have an AP is just the product of all of these. You see this is some kind of E function. And so then I want that to go to zero. So if I can say that the probability that none of them have the monochromatic arithmetic regressions goes to zero, and I know that one of them has something with probability of going to one. So let's see. So I put n up in the corner. AP sub k is just all of the APs. And then when I have a subscript on A, uh, I'm looking at that's my gap. So I'm going to filter these based on their gap. Okay, so here's what works. So from each, for each gap, D, I want to take away those arithmetic progressions that have initial term in this thing. Why did I choose that thing? Because I want them to be more than 2D apart. Because then I'm able to say something about how they're placed with, with each other. So uh, the A bar is all of those that weren't removed. And so I know I have a, a structured set where their uh, initial terms are more than 2D apart. So I can say something. OK. This is what I can say. I'm not going to go through it. By construction, it has at least a third of all of the APs. I hope you use a computer with this one. Uh, in this step right yeah. here. Yeah, I, don't, I didn't do it by hand. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I think I used it here too. Okay. So this talk is all your copy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now you taught me that. Well, why do this by hand? So then you go through this. Uh, it's easy to write down. This three sevenths comes about from a lemma, and then it works out nicely that you have less than half. So I know I have between you know 50 and 33 percent of them, which is what I want, and I also know that they're in some sense bound away from each other. Okay, so here's how I'm partitioning it up. S is n divided by this very slow growing function. So it's I'm just going to call it intervals i. So i1 is the first s, i2 is the second s. And now I'm just going to focus on one of these intervals. Nice thing about arithmetic regressions is the translation invariant. So I can just take an arbitrary interval and everything I do on it applies to each. Okay, so I'm taking I sub L as just a random interval. I randomly color them. Xi is the event that the ith KAP from my structured set now. So now it can't just be any AP, it has to be in here, uh, is monochromatic. And this S squared over 6, I know I have at least that many. So that's coming uh, from the bounds um, from the lower bound on, the eight, on number of eights. So P is the probability that a monochromatic exists. Kind of a standard argument. I want the probability of the union. I know inclusion exclusion says if I carry that out, I get exactly, but that's hard. So if you stop at each other, every other term, this switches signs. So the second Bonferroni gives me greater than or equal. The probability that one of them is monochromatic is easy because it's random. So uh, the first one has some color, and then all of the k minus one others have to match it. And so this is how many, so this is the term that I need to do something with. Okay. I didn't guess the structure and then hope this happened, right? Mm -hmm. That's not how math works. <laughs> so what I wanted is I wanted this to be bigger than 6 so that I could have a difference that actually is of order s squared. And so so you look at what do you need to have that happen, you backtrack. And so then you write it as if you're magic. You say, hey, look at this. Here's some lemmas, and look what pops out. <laughs> so that's where this comes from. And it's a lot of technical lemmas to get that for. Um, and it's really just a bunch of algebra and inequalities. So there's really no sense in putting that down. <coughs> Here's the effect. And so now. You have this s squared. I know that r is at least 2, so that 2r minus 3 is at least 1. And that's what I needed. So it works out nicely. And so now I have a probability, and if I go backwards, p is the probability that a monochromatic kap does exist. So that's what my p is here. And I have it that it's bigger than this. So the probability that it doesn't have one is 1 minus that. And so I substitute in for s, I get this n squared. I have that on the top, you work through and you get something. Looks like this. So you've got 1 minus, this is constant because r is given. This function is going off to infinity. And I know I have a bunch of these that I'm going to multiply together. How many do I have? see, I have this thing. And so I put that in there. You do some uh, asymptotics, which we'll just say for very large k, kind of an issue. You get some kind of exponential. And the nice thing is that that's a 2 thirds, that's a 4 thirds. And so you get something that's going off to infinity. And so 
this goes to zero. And, and we have now the probability that none of them contain a monochromatic AP uh, is going to zero. So one of them does with probability going to one. So this, there's some steps missing here. So that's not just plug, plug in. Uh, okay, so that tends to one. So what does that tell me? Hence the probability that a random R coloring admits a monochromatic KAP tends to one. And my N is So root k r to the k over 2. And all I needed to do was bring that upper bound down to get root k, because now it matches the lower bound. And so now I have my threshold function. And so now we can say that I'm going to stay with two colors. 2 to the k over 2 root k. That is where things change, from almost none to almost all. Now there's this g of k going off to infinity, but that can be arbitrarily small. Uh, now, that's a very different approach than the regular van der Waerden numbers, which you saw would be 2, k, 2 to the k over k is the best bound. So if you want to kind of, there's a big difference between almost all and all. It's <laughs> really what's going on. These, these Ramsey numbers, you're really looking for exceptions, and to get those exceptions, you really have to increase things a whole lot. But almost all the time, it behaves as you want. Okay, so that is the threshold commercial break. <laughs> so you gotta watch that. So that's the book. Um, part two. So this is what I'm doing currently. So this, uh, I worked with Maria Descalu. She's an undergraduate Colgate. Will Sapoli, we just hired as a statistician. Um, and so this has a very different flavor. I'm not going to give an answer, for example. I'm not going to say, here's the, here's the answer. <coughs> but I'm going to hopefully present some things that are pretty intriguing. So van der Verden's theorem is Ramsey theory on integers. Kind of the standard Ramsey theory is on graphs. So I'm just going to explain it for two colors. What a complete graph on k vertices just says you have k points and every edge between two, well, state it in that way, is there. And then you color them. And so a monochromatic k sub 3 is a monochromatic triangle. A monochromatic k sub 4 is not a square. Yes. All those, but then the other two diagonals, but they're, they don't cross, they're like this. Ramsey theorem says if you have enough vertices and you two color, then you get monochromatic sub-complete graphs that have to happen. So you can't break it by partitioning. Here's R6, R3 is 6. So you have six people at a party. You either love or hate them. No other choice, right? So each person you assign love, love, hate, and everybody does that. Then, if you isolate yourself, there's five other people. Pigeonhole principle says you have to love or hate at least three of them. Can't be two and two, because there's another one to do. So we'll say whatever you want red to be, that can be your love or your hate. But and if you there's cannot others, love and hate anybody. Correct, you can't love and hate. <laughs> Okay. Yes. <laughs> I've got three. Okay. Well, what happens if these two also, let's say red is love, love each other? Then you've got this three triangle, right? So what does that mean? That means this has to be blue if you're trying to avoid it, but it also means this has to be blue if you're trying to avoid it, and this one, because then you've got that one. And so if you're trying to avoid the red triangle, you get the blue triangle. No getting around it. But this doesn't work if you take away one of the vertices. 
you can find a way to, to avoid it. So that's kind of the base case for Ramsey's theorem. Here is what's known. So we've got R3 is 6, so that's a monochromatic triangle. R4 is 18, so if you have 18 vertices, two colors, you have a complete graph on four vertices of some either red or blue. And then these are probably easy to calculate. <laughs> R5 is not known. Five, right? Actually, there was a paper that just came out last week. <laughs> Push this from 49 to 48. Right? And that's kind of a big deal, actually. That's, that's not easy. But they're still between 43 and 48. So we don't know. And then R6 is, is really hopeless. It was hopeless when I started studying this. Still hopeless. It would be hopeless when I stopped studying this. Um, so in, until we have some kind of quantum computing, which that's kind of out of the question. So what can we do? We can get some asymptotics. This uses the uh, probabilistic method, which is kind of what I did before, and the Lobosch local lemma, which kind of bounds rare events. The, all that really does is that it takes the square root of 2, which is here, and it moves it up here. <laughs> but that's a paper, so if you can, I don't know, Move this group two over to here. That's a huge paper. <laughs> okay, a different approach. Hard to calculate, so instead of all, we'll, we'll do this almost all thing again. Okay, not as easy with Ramsey's theory, uh, with, with the graphs. So we can define this almost all number by saying, what, what probability do I want to allow that I have these monochromatic structures? So, we're, you know, you can, uh, you can have this as a function. That's probably very difficult, but maybe you want this to be very small, right? So, uh, Ramsey's theorem would make this equal zero, right? But now I want to allow a little. Okay, so in order to look at these, we know nothing about the distribution. So you could use something, I don't know, Chevy Chepson called or something, but it's not going to give you anything. I mean, there's really there's nothing there. What is known, uh, this is from the 90s, is that if you look at this distribution of how many monochromatic graphs, subgraphs there are, then it, it asymptotically follows this formula. Now, there's that's for a large K, meaning we're looking at large subgraphs, and it's also there's restrictions on N dependent on K. So it's not just it does this all the time. But if you've had probability, you'll notice that that's Poisson. Yeah. And so there's actually a lot of Ramsey objects that are Poisson in the asymptotics. Now, these are developed for asymptotics, so for small k, like 4, 5, 6, this does nothing. And I'll give you a graph to show you how nothing it does. So. This is uh, what I just said. It's not good for small k. Okay, so I had uh, a young graduate student, this was, uh, she's doing summer research with me, uh, created a uh, code. So hers was recursive in nature um, to count, to generate a random two coloring, and count how many monochromatic subgraphs there are. And um, so once, we get, once she got that working on one computer, it was um, distributed over 25 computers. Mm -hmm. So we were able to get a lot of data as we went. Here's what came back. 